You're right here, like in the Philippines, love, team, nation, and body, and easy. One nation, on rule, on love. Hello, my friends. This is Bobby D coming to you live. From Talamban, Cebu, Philippines. I'm having an awesome time in the Philippines today. Hope you are as well. Where you're from? Hey, today I'm gonna talk to you about green lights in a relationship. You need to know. In the Philippines, <laughs> yeah, man. Green lights in a relationship. You need to know. In the Philippines, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, what a joy, such a joy. It is to come back to you again, my friends. And today, I want to say, those of you here for the first time, if you would please click on the subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you can continue seeing fresh new Philippine videos, motivational videos, and worldwide videos. Now, when you talk about relationship mm -hmm. yeah man woman woman man get together hook up cook up sugar up, you know what i'm saying it's always important ladies and gentlemen that we make sure that we view what red flags red lights okay in a relationship when you're dating someone because certain clues to that person's life that love life their their uh, educational life their family life can be obtained and ascertained as we view them while we're what dating are you with me so far jay okay I, I know you got me but so um sometimes ladies and gentlemen as we date people we often view and find uh, and look out for the red lights the green lights you know what i'm saying the red flags uh but ladies and gentlemen sometimes we forget about the green lights you know what I'm saying? so today we're gonna take a look at some green lights you need a book to know about when you're dating when you have a relationship somebody you know green lights sometimes have a tendency to get um to get not noticed they go unnoticed and to, to go unobserved so and they're just as important as the red lights you know what i'm saying yeah red light in a relationship if you see a man is nasty and he picking in his nose <laughs> you at the dinner table and he picking in his nose in front of you that's a red light that's a red flag oh my <laughs> he doing that in front of you what would he do uh in the back of you and all that that's worse you know so he has poor hygiene, stuff like that. Red, red lights and red flags pop up all the time. So you, you calm, you see that. So you know, came out red light. But what about the green lights? Yeah, don't you need to know what you should look for for a good date, for a good relationship, for a good person? Green lights. We overlook the green lights a lot of times because we're just focused on the red lights. You know, you ever been to a, uh, 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 New Orleans and, and all these Las Vegas, they got these places called Red Light District. You know what I'm saying? You know what that means, right? When you get in there, <laughs> the lady gonna say, Hey, sailor, <laughs> uh, you need some friendship tonight. <laughs> Can I help you sail your boat tonight? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's red light. That's, that's nasty stuff. Okay? You don't want, don't do that, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, don't go in no Red Light District. You don't need that in your life. Keep it clean. Keep it right, tight, long, strong. That's the, I just gave it to you for an example, the red light. But no, uh, we, we don't want red light living. We don't want red light dating. We don't want red light loving. We don't want red light relationship. We want green light. Hmm? Green light. Remember that song? Red light. Uh -huh. Green light. I forgot the name of the song. But it's, it's a cute, cute little song about red light, traffic light, all that kind of stuff. But, it's like, but uh, today we're going to look at green lights. Green lights. You with me? We're, gonna, we're not going to be long. We're not going to be long. I'm going to run this real quick. I don't see a lot of people there. I'm gonna run real quick. We out, okay? You with me, Jake? I'm not gonna keep you long. I know, I know, man. You ready to go to be, you know, tired, but I'm tired, man. You keep me about. Okay, I got you. I got you. I, I did this just for you. People that's tired out there don't want to stay up all night. Bobby, you don't keep me up all night last night. I don't want to be up there. Okay, I got you, man. I got this just for you. I got four, I got about four or five things. Excuse me. <clears throat> At the DMs, I got some. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you my new coffee. Can you hold one sec, please? I'm gonna show you my new. I got some new coffee, man. I told y'all I'm experimenting with different types of coffees. I got a new coffee. It's better than copy cola. Remember, copy cola is my standard, right? I got a new. I got a new one. It beats coffee, and it's natural, all natural. There's no refined sugar. Uh, there's no dairy. Non. There's a no dairy cream creamer. There's a non dairy cream. One sec, please. One sec. Real quick. Real quick. Real quick. Why? This coffee is the 
bomb. It's the bomb bay, baby. See this right here? DX2 coffee, mangosteen coffee. It's mangosteen coffee with stevia. Stevia, if you don't know, is a natural sugar. It's a plant from a plant. It tastes like sugar, but it's not. It doesn't, there's no refined sugar, there's no calories in it, and it's good for your health. And I'm going to show you, this coffee is made with mangosteen. It has malungi, no, no. It has agar agaricus mushroom. And I remember I just showed you this mushroom coffee I was drinking the other day. And it has gondoderma, that's another mushroom type coffee. And it has panax ginseng, ginseng. It's God. It's the bomb. And then it's got non-dairy creamer and a uh, few coffee beans, but it's good, man. It is good. It's like it's just like coffee, coffee cup, my favorite. My used to be my favorite. This is my favorite now. DX2, baby. Now the D stands for Bobby D. <laughs> Bobby D coffee too. Nah, this is just flat. But yeah, I just want to share it with you. Okay, so let's get ready. Let's get ready. So first thing we'll do, ladies and gentlemen, and uh Thank you all for coming tonight. You know what I'm saying? I know y'all tired. You got to get ready to go to work and all that kind of stuff, man. But, you know, life is life. I'm here for you. You know, I'm be tired. You think I'm going to get tired, too? I get tired just like you. You know, I did 31 days for you. And sometimes I did two, three, four videos in a day. You think I wasn't tired? Come on, man. Sometimes we got to go beyond our feelings. Sometimes we got to go beyond our emotions and do what's right, tired, long, strong. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's not about your fatigue. It is about your ability to go beyond your fatigue to get what you need to get. I'm bringing you some stuff that you need to know. Okay? So focus. No hocus pocus. Let's be alert. All right. Let's go. Uh, so first thing I want you to show you uh, what we talked about on yesterday. Had an awesome, awesome broadcast. If you didn't see the show yesterday, ladies and gentlemen, I would advise you to go ahead and get hit that replay button for yesterday's show. Take a look at it, man. We got in some great topics. And uh, we talked about this right here. Tell you right there. Exes, man. I ain't talking about no Malcolm X. Don't come in here about Bobby. She's Malcolm X's girlfriend. <laughs> nah, man. Exes, okay? Your ex-girlfriend or ex-boyfriend. Your exes, man. We talked about, you know, uh, when they come back. You know, it's a hell when it's hell when you take an ex back. Hmm? And the reason why they come back, they see you happy without you. They, they notice you're doing better. They're, they're uh, testing. Sometimes they want to test you. And then they want to access. We talked about all of that, man. It's a good show. If you missed it, you need to check it out, man. You know, we talked about some good stuff. And uh, exes can be a mess. I mean, I'm serious. The bottom line, as I ended that show yesterday, I advise everybody that's dealing with an ex in their life, do not go back. Backwards is the worst thing you can do, okay? Now, there are exceptions to every rule, right? There is an indication there's a principle, biblical principle, this data is rooted in scriptures called rec reconciliation, when you can reconcile your differences, okay? But however, and it's a big however, both parties, ladies and gentlemen, have to be in, all in, not all out, all in. They're both, they got to want it, like they want to breathe. They got to want that. And then this needs a third party. They need therapy. They need counseling. They need you know, people, somebody can walk them through what they did wrong so they can reconcile, reconcile, come back together and mend their ways, mend their differences and make up and not break. Are you with me? So that is the exception, biblical exception to the rule. Don't go back. All right. So let's go. Top for the day. Thumbnail for the day. Thumbnail for the day. I ain't going to be long. Thumbnail for the day. Let's go. Right here. Green light, shining light, green light, shining light. Hey, green light, baby. See her right there, girl? She look like a green light. She look a go to me. <laughs> she don't look like a no-go. Does she look like a no-go to you? She look like a go to me. You know what I'm saying? If I was on the market for another lady and she and I, went, I didn't want nobody shady, she'd be like a go, baby. That would be like a green light right there. Green light. <laughs> yeah, man. Green light. That's what you want, man. You don't want no red light woman all full of makeup all over her face, like looking like a clown. Like, what you want? Uh, hi, hi, honey. What does she even sound crazy? <laughs> and then when you're in the Philippines, when, when a woman comes up on you, that's a red flag right there, okay? That's a red light. You don't want a woman approaching you in the Philippines because normally Filipinas are shy people. They don't approach a man unless there's a reason to do so. Because you see you about to fall, you drop something in your pocket, then she's, sir, I'm sorry, sir, you dropped this, sir? Something like that, it's okay. But just coming up, hi, sir, how are you? No, don't go with that. 
because they're trying to get something. They have an ulterior motive, okay? That's a red flag. That's not normal for a Filipino to just come up all of a sudden and you entire talking. They don't do that. They're very, very conservative and shy people. So they're going to look at some green light, man. Green light. Green lights you need to know about so that when you go about your business and trying to get you a woman in the Philippines, or you might already have a woman, but you're talking, you went to dinner with your lady and she said a bunch of crazy stuff and you say, okay, everything you said was red light. I don't need that. Them, let's talk about some green light conversation and you move, change the conversation. And if she ain't got nothing green light to say, no, you don't need, no, she ain't, ain't the one for you. Sometimes you will notice that when you initially dated your lady, everything was green light conversation. You know, everything you, she passed this check, she passed that check, and you loved the stuff she was saying. But then when she got you, everything started turning red. Like, oh, where my money at? I was like, where that come from? You never said that to me before. I need my money. <laughs> so sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, they can change from green to red. You know? And there's a reason for it, because they was trying to, they was uh, shucking a job with you from the beginning. They was fooling you until the, the real them came out. You know what I'm saying? When they got you, when they know they got you hooked, that's when all the real stuff come out. You know? So red light, green light can turn to red, red can turn to green. You with me so far? I, I look, look at the replay by Mel I know you got it. Let's go. We got a few things here. I got one focus sheet. We out, man. I'm telling you, I ain't playing. I'm gonna ride a train today. Like, push your caca. We get that body up. Let's go. All right. Uh no hope it's focus, yes, foul cash, foul cash. I got six things on Six, baby. Six. And we're gonna pick up some sticks. Number one. Whenever you're in a conversation, whenever you're in a relationship, whenever you're in an engagement with a Filipina, female, female, she male, anyone that you want to hook up with, right? You want to make sure that they have the ability to do what? To do what? Apologize, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, a lot of people just don't apologize and they know they wrong. You know, they said something crazy, they offended you and they know they did it and they, they never say, I'm sorry. Or they might, they might act like it's over with, but they never talk about it again. But you still hurting from the pain they put on you. And some, some people don't have a feeling of empathy. Some people don't have a feeling of sympathy. And those people you don't want in your life. Those are the red flags. So when you see a pie, a person has, hey, man, did I say something, sir? Did I say something to offend you? I'm so sorry. When you see a person that says that to you, they apologize for something that may even not necessarily offended you, but may have offended you. That's a green light. Mm -hmm. That's a green light person. That's a green light characteristic that you want to see from somebody. When they'll have the ability to emphasize, sympathize, and apologize for something that they may have said that could possibly offended you. Lisa D was like that. Uh, she always shows empathetic statements and stuff to me when we talk. And she would say, I'm not saying something that you're wrong. Are you okay? I, I, don't, I didn't mean to hurt you. I said, no, you know what I'm saying? You know, you're just being you. you know? And I, I understood that in her. She was very, very empathetic. She's very apologetic when she when she needed to be. I, and I like that in people. Those are green light characteristics that you need to look at. And a lot of times we overlook little tiny stuff like that, you know, because we also focus on what? The green light stuff. So number two, number one, apologize. Number two, words and behaviors align. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. She might say, well, I, I, I love black people, you know, but she never dated a black person in her life. The words say, I love black people, and you're a black man or whatever. But the words and what she has done in her life, they don't match up. You love, how could you love black people and you never dated a black person or you've never talked to them? I'm the first black person you met. You know what I'm saying? Are you sure about that, man? You ever, you ever dated a black person? No. You ever talked to a black person? No. Okay. Well, what do you? What is it that, that you determine in your mind that you love black people? It, it, this mismatch there, okay? And whenever you find a mismatch in a relationship when you're dating someone, that's an issue. So one who can tell you with the words and the statements are lined up, you must say, well, I love black people. I have three black friends that I talk to all the time on the internet, and they just make me feel so good. And I see so many good qualities in African-American people that I, I have no problem being, I just, I just crave being around African-Americans. Is there something about them that I just like? That the kind of green light relationship, the green light characteristic that you want to look at, where the words and the behavior match up, okay? And you should be looking at that every time when you're, when you're out there trying to look for a lady and she ain't shady, or ladies, you're trying to look for a man and he ain't shady, that's what you want to look up. 
then their words and their and their actions or their behavior line up to a, to a guiding light, to a guiding standard, to a guiding principle that you hold dearly in your life. Are you with me so far, G? Does this make sense? Let's go. I got a few more. We out, man. I ain't playing with y'all. Let's go. All right. Number three. Come communication is clear and honest. Oh man. This is this is very important to me. I need people in my life that are honest. Okay? You tell me you lie to me, man. You, you, you lie to me one time. I'm going to be keeping that lie in the back of my mind. Even though you might apologize to me. And, and I say, okay, I'm going to remember that lie. And I don't like people to lie to me. I rather you, I rather you tell me the truth, man. Don't lie. Because when you lie to me, I can't trust you. Mm -hmm. I don't want to, and I, I like you. We've been talking fine. And then I told us one lie you told me. That throws me off on your whole character. It tells me something about you. Okay. So, so, so when you're honest with me and you're, you're clear in your communications, uh, uh, that speaks volumes about your what? characteristics. That speaks volumes about your lifestyle. That speaks volumes about your what? upbringing that you were led and raised in, in a good family that taught you to speak right, talk right, walk right, and say the truth. The Bible says the truth will make you what? free, baby. He that is free is free in what? But indeed. So I honor people. I love people that tell me the truth. Sometimes the truth hurts, man. You think you think it don't hurt sometimes? It hurts sometimes, you know? I don't like to be hurt, but I want the truth. I don't care if it hurt me. I don't like to be hurt, but I want the truth, man. Don't tell me no lies. Tell me the truth. Whether I like it or not, tell me the truth. Don't lie to me. That's the worst thing you can do. So when you find somebody telling you the truth, and they and, and what they their statements line up, and they're telling you, and they honor you, that's the person. And the communications are clear. That's a green light woman. That's a green light man. Huh? A lot of us try to lie. We want to press the, we always want to try to press the, well, you know, uh, I'm a president of IBM. What? <laughs> yeah, I make six million a year, you know, and uh, I took a vacation. I'm trying to find, you know, just having a little fun, you know. Come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> people do, man. You think I'm playing with you? You'd be surprised what people do and what people say just to get you to like them or get you to make you feel, make themselves feel impressive and make you feel that they're impressed and be impressed by you. Okay. So look out for somebody that's lying. If they're lying, they're flying. And you don't need that in your life. You need people that are honest with you with good, clear, consistent communications. And don't play no game with me. Okay? Green light if their communications are clear and they're honest. Number four, get ready to go out the door, man. They make you feel appreciated. This is a good one for me. I love people that make me say thank you, that say thank you to me. Yeah, I, I was just reading why I like that. Because that's the way my mama told me. And my mama raised me. My mama praised me to say thank you. Thank you. And you know why she praised me like that? Because she did it every time somebody did something for her. She said, thank you. And then when she got in church, man, <laughs> you all know, you know, you know, you know, doing a black church, right? Your mama go to church and she be listening to the preacher. You sitting next to your mama. And all of a sudden she said, thank you, thank you. She got happy. She got, my mama used to get happy, man. And she get up there. I like her. That's why I got that thank you from that. I got it from her. Yeah. She, she would teach me whatever somebody do for you, Bobby. Big, small, say thank you. You know, that speaks volumes about you. And nobody tells that person that you're saying thank you to that you're grateful. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, brother. I don't know about you, sister, but I'm a grateful person. I don't care what you do for me. <laughs> it's more than I had, right? It's more than I had. If you give me a peso or a penny, it's more than I had. And I'm going to say, thank you. Hmm? Thank you comes from my heart. When somebody's grateful, it comes from the heart. You know, I ain't talking about that, I'm going to fool you. I'm a fool. You, can, you can find a phone. You want somebody to clear their communication, honest, and they say thank you. That shows their gratitude and their grateful heart. Hmm? I love people with grateful heart. You can trust those type of people. You can trust them to be honest with you and clear in their communication. And you can trust them, a grateful person, to pick someone that's uh, reliable and loyal as well. Okay, I'm a grateful person. If I'm your friend, 
I'm gonna tell you some stuff. I'm gonna tell you the truth, and you might cry because I'm gonna tell you it may be painful, but it will make you free after you get crying. Huh? Because I'm grateful for your friendship. I'm gonna be honest to you. I'm gonna tell you the truth and the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And I'm not gonna tell you in a way that it will make you uh be angry with me. I'm gonna say, hey man, let me tell you something. It's good. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna take you to the side. It's like, hey man, let me tell you something. You know, I love you, right? You mean like that, right? Was it mean, right? I'm gonna tell you, break it down easy. But you know what? I saw your lady, man, and she was she was she was, she was going out with somebody with you, man. You know, I just don't share that with you, man. I know it's gonna be, I know it's hard for you to take it, man, but you know what tell you nothing to lie. You know, that's how I am. The truth, baby. Give me the truth. And give me to me any way you can, but give it to me. Because I'm gonna do the same for you. And then you know, some people wouldn't accept that. What? You lying. You know? And then I cut them loose. Because I don't need that. <laughs> people that can't accept the truth are people that are running from reality. They got their head in the sand. They can't deal with the truth. And so I don't need them people in my life. I, I need people that can deal with the truth, that handle the truth, to love the truth, and allows the truth to work in their life to make them what? Free. The Bible says that he that is free is free in what? Indeed. Okay. So truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. When you say thank you, you're grateful. You have a grateful attitude and a grateful heart. Okay. Grateful. Let's go. Uh, one more, one more, one more. Uh, and then they said, yeah, number number five, uh, they said honor and respect is boundaries. Man. I told you, I give you a great broadcast one time on boundaries. If you, if you haven't seen that broadcast, check it out. Okay, boundaries, man. It is so vitally important, ladies and gentlemen, that we set boundaries in our life. Whatever area or endeavor we're in, that we set a boundary. A boundary means that, hey, you cross this line, it's going to be some problems. The boundary sets standards. Everybody needs to have standards in their life. Whatever area, how old, I don't care how old you are, how young you are, you need a level of standards, something that let people know, hey, I'm not going to put up with this. When you cross this line with me, we're going to have some problems. That's how you need to be. Because when you have standards and boundaries in your life, you are demanding and letting people know that you are respectful and that you uh, don't be treating me with disrespect. I'm going to take this, but I'm not going to take that. Everywhere I go and anything I do, I set boundaries because it's important for me to look in, at people in the face and say, look, you crossed this boundary and I told you I don't play that game and I let them go. Or I let them have it. You know, boundaries, man. And so when you see the money that don't have no boundaries, you can't have them in your life. They will do anything. They will fall for anything and stand for nothing. So when you see a person that has boundaries, you respect them because they, you know they have standards. They stand for something. Okay, and, and people that stand for something stand together, and you know that you can rise up with them because they have the similar or same standards in life that you have, and you can move forward with that person in your life. That's a green light person. Let's go. Uh, one more, one more, one more. And then uh, resolve conflicts with intentionality. Okay, yeah. You want somebody that's able to resolve conflicts, not run away. When they have a problem and that they go in the bed and cry. <laughs> How are they going to solve anything? You know what I'm saying? How is that going to move you forward out of that problem into a resolution zone? It's not. You just All you're doing is crying with tears. That never will get you forward. That just gets you full of saggy eyes. You're like, you were wrong with you. I've been crying. Yet. Crying don't solve nothing. Persons that are positive-minded, green light people always want to resolve problems. They want to resolve situations because why would nobody want to resolve it because the problem is keeping you and them away from each other and they want to be close to you they want to be in tune with you they want to be in sync with you they want to be in touch with you and the problem is causing you to be out of touch i want to be in sync with my lady i don't want to run around every day with a problem with these they pop they pop up every now and then but we resolve them you know and if you find somebody don't want, they're running away from problems, they don't want to resolve problems, you leave them alone. That's a red flag. You want a green light person that want to resolve problems. That's what. That's right. Resolve. So when you find a prop person with a history of resolution, you say, okay. You say, well, you know, I was raised in a family and we didn't have any food and, and I had to work when I was eight years old. And I didn't go to school. They said, oh, yeah, you didn't go to school. Okay. So how did how did you uh, get? get to be a, a salesperson and you didn't have any high school. Well, I went to school after I got 18, I went to oh, night school and I got my GS, GSD and that's the person that resolved the issue. 
They had a hard time coming up in life. They, picked, they couldn't go to school. They had to work. But when they got up on their own, they got older, they resolved that issue. They resolved issues. They don't let stuff hold them back. They see where they need to go, and they know it's a problem stopping them. There's a gap from that that causing the problem to have a gap from them going to where they have to go. They fill the gap with a resolution. You need people that have uh, problem solvers. Not complainers, not whiners about, well, you know, my mama didn't ever have me. I was working all day and I couldn't go to school. That's why I don't have no GED. You're grown now. Get yourself in school. Not school. Get your GSD. Do something. Stop blaming your mama. Problematic people blame people for their issues. You know, it might have been your their parents' issue when you was younger, but you're a grown man now. You're a full-grown woman now. And you still crying about what happened when you was raised? That's over with. Living in the past ain't going to help you today. That's gone. Stop living in the past. Stop. That's one of the problems. We have, we blame everybody else for our issues. So, so, so people that are problem solvers, that, that, that are intentionally want to resolve uh, things in their life, those people are green light people. Those people are uh, uh, green, green flag people. Those people that you need to be involved with in your life. Because whenever you live in this world, problems are going to happen. And so you want somebody that's a problem solver. You want somebody that's a resolution that can solve the resolve the issues rather than cry about the issue. Crying ain't gonna solve nothing. And complaining about it ain't show ain't gonna solve nothing. You complain all day. Is that gonna is that gonna stop the issue from happening? Is that gonna make it better? No. Negativity only creates more negativity. Hmm? Be positive. That's what you want. A problem solver, a person that leaves an intentional resolving issues in life, in your relationship, uh, in, your, in, in your job, in your community, in your church, resolutions to problems. If that person has the type of mentality, that's a green light person. And that's the kind of person you want in your life. Okay? Last one, man. That's it. That's it, man. We out. That's it. I told you I'm going to be I told you I'm gonna be long today. I don't be playing, man. You know what I'm saying? I respect your time. I'm going to run this real quick. We're going to run a train today by BDC One Nation under Green One Love. We out, man. Okay? I ain't playing with you. I'm playing with y'all. Yeah. You better look you better. You don't know you better ask somebody. Let's go. Uh, people get ready. Whether the train is coming, don't need no ticket. Uh, it just get down, boy. I needed love. Ooh, say it again. Say sweet, sweet love. Don't need, don't need no ticket. I know. You just get down, boy. Get down, boy. Ah, when I say two, two, you say all the boy. Two, two. Two, two. When I say all the boy, you say two, two. All aboard, all aboard, all aboard. Let's ride this train. Y'all ready to ride the train? Bobby Lee, see one nation on the roof one love. Let's go. <laughs> I'm so glad we spent, we had this time together. Just to sing a song or say a word today, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm just a happy person, man, sometimes. And it makes, I get even more happy when I see my people, man. It's a blessing for me to come to you every day, you know what I'm saying? Every time I have opportunity to come. I'm so excited and I'm so happy to be with you, man. I might act like I'm not, but I really am. You know what I'm saying? Because I love you, man. And this is about love. It's about love what you're doing and doing what you love. And many people in this world don't have that opportunity to do what they love and love what they do. But I do. And so I thank the Lord for you. And, and that right. <laughs> Let's go. I got to find out who rough enough, tough enough, buffed up to be for man in the in the Who that said they going to be? Hey, man, y'all saw the game, y'all? Did y'all see the game, man? Oh, Lord, Stafford, 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 Matthew Stafford, that's my guy. I, Matt, I followed Matthew, Matthew Stafford from uh, when he was, in, he was in college, he was in high school in Texas. And then he got, he went to college, went to University of Georgia, he was a the bulldog, you yeah? know, he was a dog, he's a dog, man. Just like me, I'm a bulldog, baby. I've been a bulldog fan since I started looking at college, I don't, I don't watch a lot of college football, but I watch the dogs because that's my state. You know, I watch anytime I see a Georgia football team uh, game on, I watch it. But I can't, they don't get a lot out here. But anyway, Stafford did the thing, man. They wanted it bad. They wanted it bad, you know. And so they they go into the Super Bowl. It's going to be St uh, the Rams and the Bengals. Man, you know, that's a great, that's, that's, that don't even sound right, does it? You football fans out there, that don't even, the Rams and the Bengals, the, some of the two worst teams. <laughs> 
<laughs> for the last, what, 10 years, those are some of the two worst teams in the league, and they're going to the Super Bowl? Oh, Lord, this is going to be jacked. But I'm going to watch it, man. Thank you, Thank you so much, Mark. He'll give me a link to watch some games and stuff out in the, in the USA. But I, get, I watch it streaming. He gave me his link to stream on. So it's nice. I, I watched part of it. I didn't watch all of it. But Stafford, man, he did it, man. He, he did good with the Bulldogs, and then he went to Detroit. They used him, you know, he – this, this entire time in Detroit was a waste. I mean, he went to a couple of playoff games, but it wasn't much. And the reason why it was a waste in Detroit, he had a bad, always had a bad offensive line or a bad defense line. Just like Matt, remember something to Matt Ryan in Atlanta? And people talk a lot of bad talk about Matt Ryan, football quarterback in Atlanta. Uh, however, Matt's never had a very good uh, offensive line in front of him, and he's never had an awesome defense. Only twice in his career. One time they went to the Super Bowl, but uh, – they didn't win it, but uh, it's some his career is similar to Matt Ryan. Never had a very good offensive line or a very good decent line, defensive line. This time he does with the Ram and he showed he could do it. Okay, and I, I'm a, I'm hoping that Matt Ryan will get, eventually get a, a good offensive line in front of him like Stafford has, and they can go something. The Falcons can go somewhere. All right, that's it. I'm sorry, buddy. I'm sorry. I got a chat. You know, I have to talk about the, the my, my sport. We all like football. All right, who we got right train? Bobby Nisi, Water Nation, under who want love. First man up in the house today. Let's go. Who we got? Dallas Cowboys. What's up, Dallas? Y'all right, man? What's up, you day? <laughs> What's up, Dallas? Long time no see, my brother from another mother. You good? You good? You satisfied with the results yesterday? Uh, Stafford turned that turned that mother out. It was behind, and then he came back. You, are you happy with that? Yeah, I'm happy, man. I always shoot for the underdog. You know, I root for the underdog. So good to see you, Dallas, in the house. He showed it out today. He kicked the sum of my money in. He said, I ain't playing today, Bobby D. I'm in this house. Yeah, good to see you, man. So bad. Dallas couldn't move it up to date and hit the playoff. But you know what I'm saying? Maybe next year, okay? And same with me with the power. Maybe next year. I don't know. But so good to see you, man. Dallas, If you, it, it's so good to see you. Hey, y'all give us props for the round train. Bobby D. needs you one night. Yeah, who we got? Uh, Michael Coffey. Need, what's up, Michael? How you doing, my brother? I'm another Martha. Michael Coffey's a frontliner, y'all. He works at the Hospice Care Center. If you don't know what that means, he works with people that are getting ready to leave this world, leave the earth uh, terminal, that have been deemed as terminal. And he tries to make them as comfortable as possible before they leave this world to the next level. Okay. So we have to we have to pray for people like Michael. He's around that COVID stuff all the time. And just make sure he he keeps himself. Uh, 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 with proper equipment that he won't get infected. So good to see you, Michael. He said, Bobby, hello. Uh, come on to God, see, boo. God bless you. Keep faith. Nurse Mike. Thanks so much, Nurse Mike. Good to see you, man. We doing good. Round trick. Oh, Mike, you know, hey, man. You, you, you let me forget, man. You know I got to tell you, right? Mike, you know I got to tell you, right? Guess what? Number two, jump on. <laughs> you know, I forgot to tell you that, man. You hit the two spot, man. Michael, when you hit the two spot, man, you got to get the business. I have to give you the business, man. Don't get mad at me, Mike. But you know, you hit the two spot. Let's go, Ron Train, Bobby DC, one nation. Who we got? Uh, who we got? Okay, my system's slow. Okay, Michael. Huh? El Perdon. Okay. Uh, Michael, that's the Michael El Negrito. He done changed the name on me. <laughs> What's up, Michael? He says salute, salute right back at you, my brother from another Martha. You know, change the name, Michael El Negrito. You know, change it for El Negrito, the El Paradon. So good to see you, my brother. You better be glad I know Spanish, man. I was like, what is that? <laughs> I don't know to say it. Michael was there last time I checked. Michael was in Mexico. I don't know where he at now, but he always a travel. He's a world traveler. You know what I'm saying? He's a gyre and retired man. He's living a life. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's what you do, man. When you Done your time, and you you put in a, you've done your time on the grind, and you want to relax. You know what I'm saying? You put you put your 20 years, your 30 years, whatever time it was. You want to collect your check and say, yeah, I'm chilling. You know, just chill, man, and go all over the world because you can do it like that. And don't get mad at him because he got it like that. You haters out there, let's go. <laughs> Roger, everybody, who we got? Terry Fleming, Rain Man coming, Rain Man coming, Rain Man, Rain Man, Rain Man coming. What's up, Rain Man? He said. Uh, hello, little Bobby D and Queen Angel. Queen Angel outside doing some clothes, man. She like, I can do my wash it. I said, go on with your bed. <laughs> she out there washing the clothes. So good to see you, man. Terry Fleming, Rain Man in the house today. Who we got around here, Bobby D? You want that? Michael Coffee? Need some coffee? Hey, I'm going to drink me a sip, sip of coffee because I need some coffee right now. Give me one minute. See what I'm drinking? I'm going to show you again. 
DX2, Bobby. DX2 copy. Uh, the D stand for Dicks. Bobby D copy 2X. Magnus team, baby. That's what I'm drinking. And it's good. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, you got it. All right. Michael said, uh, Bobby, uh, hi, my name is Bhutan. I'm going to be. Thank you so much, Mike. Right, train, Bobby DC, One Nation. Uh, Michael L. Pettadon. He said, I'm going to look for this coffee. Thanks, bro. <laughs> you welcome, man. Hey, you might have to order it. I don't know. I don't know if it's, I, I got this coffee from a, uh, in the mall, and it was a lady at a booth. I don't know if it's on the market or not, but she was selling it in a booth. So uh, you pro you may not find, I don't know. Just look for it online. It's called DX2 Mangosteen Coffee. Let me see if I can see the company name. It's manufactured and distributed by Consolidated Packaging Enterprise, and they're in Quezon, Quezon City, Philippines. So it's made in the Philippines, okay? All right, that might help you. I don't know. All right, we got right train Bobby Lee One Nation. Um, my system's really slow, y'all. Oh man, what's going on? Okay, we probably done dropped again. Did we drop again? Did we drop? Okay. Okay, Michael Coffee. He's a Bobby. Uh Maraming Salamat for all the relationship people. You're welcome, Michael. Uh life is about relationships. I've said this before. Everything in life is the cornerstone is relationships. You think about it on your job, you know, in your church, in your community, with your family, with your friends. You know, everything in life resolves around and revolves around what? Relationships. So if you can't handle relationships, you're not going to handle life very well. Okay. So when we get strengthened in how we handle our relationships, we get strengthened overall. And that's what I'm about reaching and teaching people about life and the things that will help them better them their lives in this world. All right, we got right train Bobby Lee's One Nation. Michael, he said, uh, Bobby, uh, hello, guys, man. Hope you save your quasta up. Uh, the Philippines is now open. Don't come there, barato. Quasta means money and barato means cheap. So he's saying, hope y'all guys, you guys save your money up because the Philippines is going to be open in February one is now open for today, February one here in the Philippines. And on the 10th, for, for you guys that are Americans, for the 10th of February is when you can come because without a visa. On the first, anybody that wants a visa can get a visa and come in. But you don't need a visa if you're an American. You come on February 10th, they allow you to come then. All you need is a valid passport that's been valid for the last six months. You need uh, uh, a, a full vaccination, that means two shots, okay? If you boost, you got your boost, that's even better. But you need two shots, and then you need a vaccine, vaccine certification showing that you've been certified, your vaccination, and it's been, you have three, three choices to get your vaccine certification. You can go to WHO, get the yellow card. You can go uh, to your state and get the national state of the digital card showing that you've been vaccinated. Well, the last one was, it was WHO, and there's another one. I forgot that one. VaxCert, VaxCert, that's another one. That's a Philippines digital uh, online certification called back cert ph so those are the ways you can get it back and that's it man you just come and enjoy yourself and go on about your business okay and if you get any symptoms you have to uh self quarantine and let the people know that's all it is but uh people they want to they're opening up they want to open up and they want to get back in the business of being uh in the travel industry okay and of being in, in the tourist industry and they want tourists to come in and so they're welcoming people back to the philippines with open arms. Michael Coffin needs, he said, Bobby, hello, guys, man, hope you say, okay, I'm sorry, I got that, sorry, sorry about that, sorry, I moved down. All right, we got, uh, Mike, he said, Bobby, make sure you are fully vaccinated against COVID-19 prior to get it. Yeah, you got to be fully vaccinated. Now, however, if you're not fully vaccinated, you haven't taken any shots, you can still come. However, there, you will be isolated. You're going to be quarantined for 14 days, man. 14 days of sitting up in a hotel, an hotel, holiday in room, just looking at the TV, looking at the four walls, okay, for 14 days. And you got to pay for those hotels. You think it's free hotel charges? No. You can pay for every day for them. So it's expensive. If you're coming in here with no quarantine, you're going to have to pay some multi haunted. I don't think you want to do that. I wouldn't. I wouldn't come. If I had to come in here and do 14 days, I'd stay right where I was. Or you like get the shot. Take your pick. Let's go round train Bobby the Easy One Nation. Terry Fleming, he said, I entered into a relationship with man-child things. I needed then, I grew out of the notions of showing maturity and self-reliance was the ruling emotion life. Okay. I sort of had that in my, my uh, childhood as well. 
I was sort of always a self doer, self motivator. And uh, my mother, my parents always told me, you know, you can do anything you want to do, be the best you can on a debt. But uh, uh, when I really went, went down to doing stuff, nobody would help me. <laughs> I had to do it on my own. So I was always out there in front. I learned that's for me, that was the best way for me because get stuff, do stuff on my own, and don't rely on a lot of people. And then even though I had people that would want to help me, I wouldn't ask for help. That's how I was. I was independent. I wanted to do it myself because when I know I've done it myself, then and, and if I did fail, fail, I would blame other people. You know, do the. But if I did it myself and I failed, I had no one else to blame but me. Okay, so I like to be like that, self-independent, self-independent, and uh, self-initiative, start things, do things on own. But he says I enter into relationships as a man child. I needed the end. I, I need things, man child thing. I need the end. I grew up out of the notions of showing maturity. So uh, and he self self reliance and was the ruling emotional life. Okay, so he relied on himself. He he was he was um, immature. Uh, when he got in a relationship with ladies, and that immaturity uh, caused him to lose so 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 many relationships, so he got got out of the idea of maturing up, and he just dealt with being himself. Now that's no longer the case. He's he's still uh, he's matured, and he's learned from the errors of his ways, and he's learned from the past, and he's a little bit better than that now. So that's what life is all about, man. You learn as you go, and you learn as you grow, as you go through things in life. You grow through them, and you go through them, and you learn or you burn. You know what I'm saying? And you got burned. You know, we all get burned sometimes, man. But, you know, you get tired. You get sick and tired of being burnt, and you learn. So this is a learning growth period in Terry Fleming's life. He's learning how to get ready for his new relationships as he will develop eventually. He's learning a lot. He In the last two years since I've known Terry Fleming, I can tell you he's grown. I've seen him grow and develop, and probably – He's seen himself growing up. And so it's a good thing. Always keep growing. Always keep learning. And life will be better for you. Okay. Let's go. Who we got? Uh, uh, that's no, okay. Here we go. Uh, I missed one. Okay. Wait a minute. Here we go. Uh, he says, Jerry Blank, he said, as the years passed, it became easier to live, to live the adult life of bills and meaningful decisions. The reasons for my relationship changed as I matured. Sometimes the pressures of life change relations. Yeah, as I, as I just got to say, as you get older, you grow and you learn and you change. And you know, one thing that changes a lot of people as they mature in life is when you get children. I don't know, you know, you guys that got kids, but I got kids. When, when I got my first daughter, my first child, everything changed for me. I realized that now I was responsible for, for a life of another human being. And I wanted their life to be better than mine, to do more things and the greater things than mine. And so far, none of my children have disappointed me. None of them. Everybody's doing good. Now, uh, initially, when they sometimes, you know, when they start out and they get 18 and 20, they do some crazy stuff. <laughs> you know, you can't do what did you do that for? You know, that's all you can tell them. What did you do that for? You know, that's and that that's what they went through that crazy stage, but they're out of that stage now, thank God. They're in the stage now where this everybody's settled. They got good jobs. You know, most of them have a. They may they're not often, only one is married. The other one got boyfriend. And sometimes some of them say, "I don't want no work." I say, "You sure about that?" Yeah, Dad, I don't want no work. But you know, they grow, they learn, they mature, and they move on in life. And that's what it's about. You know, maturity. Let's go. Ryan Train, Bobby DC, One Nation. Terry Fleming said, "The first thing we have to face before entering into a meaningful relationship is our own reflection. What do I see in the mirror?" Do I see an angry little man with illusions of persecution? Yeah, you got to check yourself out. Before you can uh, hook up with anybody else, you have to check yourself out and make sure you're right, tight, long, and strong. So if you try to hook up with somebody else and you, you're a man of anger, you're a man in, in pain, and you're a man that's living in the past, past things happen to you, you was abused as a child, you was used as a child, you was neglected, neglected as a child, uh, all kinds of stuff happen to people. And those things that happened to us in the past have a tendency to affect us in the present day and time. You know why it affects us in the present day and time? Because we never let them go. Hmm? Stuff in the past, we never, some stuff we just never let them go. And they holding us back from being the person we need to be, from being the person we can be. Those things from the past life is pushing us back. And the reason why they're pulling us back, because we never let go of it in here and in our hearts. They're still 
holding us back. I know a lot of people that are in pain right now, trauma and pain right now from the things that happened to them in the past. But everybody has stuff happen to them in the past, good, bad, and ugly. No, I did, you did, everybody. But you can't live like that. You can't live with those past things in your in you because they hold you back. You will never have a good present. You'll never have a good future but when you were living about well, you know, they did this to me and they didn't give me, I didn't have no food to eat. Everybody's like, hey, okay, I understand. Bye. Nobody want to be around somebody who's always whining about things that happen to them. You have to move beyond that. And they grow beyond that. And that's the, when you're dating out there, if you find somebody always whining about their past relationship or they past this, that's a no-go. <laughs> that's a red light, red flag. Let move on. Because you'll never move forward with that kind of individual that's whining and crying. They'll bring you down to their level. Next thing you know, you're whining and crying just like that. Let's go. Ryan Chang, Bobby DC. Uh, we got uh, Michael Coffin. He said, Bobby, hi. Uh, guys, man, get yourself fully vaccinated so you can go meet some Wabe Maganda. Yeah, man. You know, there's a lot of Filipinos out there waiting for you. Uh, this is a very, very exciting time for the Philippines because. Many, many people are on their way here as I speak. In the plane right now. The plane, the plane, the plane. Remember Tattoo? Tattoo said, the plane, the plane, the plane. <laughs> Y'all remember that song? I forgot the name. Love Boat, Love Boat or something like that. Anyway. But yeah, every a lot of people are on the plane right now. And they're going to get here any minute. You know? People are happy. This is a happy time. People have been waiting for two long years, man. Two years to see the person they love. Yeah. And so uh, it's an exciting, exciting time. And if you guys haven't gotten your gap together to get ready, shame on you. Let's go, round Train. Who we got? Jerry Fleming said, do I close my eyes to self and blame others for my shortcomings? I have to admit that I have problems and realize that my, my way isn't always the right way. Yeah, we always have to have what I call self-introspection, self-check, uh, self-check, okay? Self, you have to check yourself, man. We all got issues. You know, and, and and we all the thing about it, we have issues, but we got to move beyond those issues. Huh? You have to feel. I always say when you when your issues have a tendency to pull you back, and a lot of time we held back because of fear. You have to feel the fear of the issue and go forward anyway. Huh? And, and so the only way you can go forward in any situation that you have a fear about is to release the fear and to release the things in the past that's holding you back. I'm not saying forget the things totally. That you can never forget anything that happened in the past can't forget it sometimes but you don't allow it to strangle you you don't allow it to paralyze you when you can't go forward in life you know so you have to choose the path of truth the path of honor the path of righteousness and the path that's strong and long for you to move forward in life holding back and thinking about stuff in the past you'll never go forward the right way is the strong way and the long way i got a lot of people i know every time i see them they're whining and crying about something Look, man, I know what I told him. Look, man, it's going to be all right. I move on. Because <laughs> I can't, I can't, you know, I, it, it's not like I'm trying to abandon them. I don't want to be bothered. But I've already talked to them over and over to get your mind right, think about what you're doing, be part of it. And they don't get it. And when I find people that don't get it, I'm not going to keep spending my time trying to get them out of the dump. I said, look, man, okay, man, I got you. Bye. <laughs> yeah, I move on. Because some people you can help, some people you can't. Round train, Bobby, DC, One Nation, who we got? Jerry, let me say, uh, gotta say this. Queen Angel is smart. She speaks multiple languages. As a leader in the making, I, I will never know the feeling of different languages cur cur coursing through my mind. Yeah, uh, she, Lady D is pretty smart. She don't look like a lot, a lot of people like it, but when you, talk, when you sit down and talk to her on one-on-one, -on -one, her, she got street smarts and world smarts. She never went to college. She got, she got high school diploma. But she got a lot of smarts. You know, smarts don't mean that you you uh, uh been to college. You could be the dumbest person in the world went to college. You know, that don't mean nothing. Your intelligence supersedes education in the, in the schools and administration and in its institutions. So she's smart, world life experience. Most of her people in her family are smart. You know, dad's smart, mama's smart, brothers and sisters smart. They're smart people in the family. So yeah, she's a nice person. She's not she speaks a lot. She's got three languages she speaks, she speaks English. So Buono and Tagalog, you know what I'm saying? So she, uh, it takes, and when you look it up, it takes intelligence to speak multiple languages. But yeah, she's a nice person, man. And I hope that everybody out there will find somebody like her. That's, uh, she, 
she's no pushover. Don't let me put on don't, don't get me wrong. She's not a pushover. She, she has, she's an independent person, but she's fair. Okay, and she's uh she 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 wants to do the right thing. One of the one, the main characteristic about this deep is that she fears the Lord. She she loves the Lord and she's gonna do everything right in his sight. Okay, let's go round train by the easy one. We got that's it. Okay, I got one more. Uh my system's slow. Okay, we go. He said, Queen Angel, and you go for it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, my brother, for my mother. Mother, we tried, man. We tried our best to hold it down on and then move forward as we go. We got goals in life to go. We got goals in life to grow. And that's what's most important. We are together like this on the goals we want in life. Uh, so she has, we have individual goals and we have family goals. Individual goals, I support her in her goals. She supports me in mine. Every year we sit down and we, we let each other know what we go, what our goals are for this year, and we shoot for it. You know? And so that's what you do when you have a uh, sustainable, retainable, loving, caring, sharing relationship. You sit down, you, you work out your goals, and you move toward them in your life. Okay? All right, guys. It looks like that's it. I don't see no more comments. You know what I'm saying? I told you I wasn't going to be long. I'm going to hit it and get it and do it right tight, and that's what I did. All right. Uh, I'll be here. I might do another one today. It depends if we're going out. I think we got to go out for something. If we do go out, I don't know if we will. Not. I might do another one today. We'll see, okay? But that's it for now, guys. This is Bobby D. And uh, say take care. And God bless. Peace. I'll see you all on the next, on the backside of tomorrow. Y'all take care and be good. Don't do nothing I would not do. Okay, man. Be good. That's